Hello, welcome to this lesson in uh, Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to continue working with hypothesis testing. Finally, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to actually conceptually do the test. We're still not going to work any real problems yet because I'm trying to guide you by the hand step by step and make sure you understand everything. But I promise you here in the next lesson, we will be doing some real problems. Um, I know a lot of you guys just want to just get to it already, but I promise you some things, if you just take them a touch slower in the beginning, will make it so much easier down the road. And everything we're covering here is applicable probably for the next 10 to 15 lessons in this class. And, and so I just want to make sure you understand it. The bottom line here is we've been saying over and over again that we want to perform a hypothesis. We have a null hypothesis and we have an alternate or a research hypothesis. And we're trying to figure out a way to mechanize or to, or to uh, uh, make it... Uh, uh, objective uh, in statistics where we can sample some data, get some information from a small body of people and use that information to uh, reject or fail to reject that null hypothesis. And so in the case of, think of uh, manufacturing pencils or something, somebody says the pencils are now longer on average than they should be. Well, what do we do then? We go and grab 20 of them off the line and we measure them. Some of them are going to be longer than they should be and some of them are going to be shorter. So how, if we find an average value for these 20 or 30 pencils that we pull off the shelf, how do we draw the line and say, okay, now they really are too far beyond what our mean should be, so the machinery really isn't working anymore. Like what if it's 0.1 millimeters, uh, the average value of the length of these pencils? What if they average 0.1 millimeters beyond where they should be? What if they average 2 millimeters? What if they average 2 inches? I mean, everybody would agree if the pencils are 2 inches, uh, longer than they should be, the machinery is probably not working. We're going to reject the null hypothesis that the machinery is working correctly, right? But where do we draw that line? This is what we're going to talk about here. Exactly how you learned to draw that line, um, the hurdle, so to speak, that you have to jump over. Uh, and when you do that, you reject that null hypothesis. That's what we're going to talk about. Now, I want to call your attention to confidence intervals just for a minute. We've studied confidence intervals a lot. I told you there was going to be some parallels. I'm going to draw those parallels for you here. If you remember, in terms of confidence intervals, we had, uh, if we were talking about means, which is what we talked about most of the time, if we had less than 30 samples, we handled it with a T distribution as an approximation to the normal distribution, right? If we had greater than or equal to 30 samples, we handled it with a normal distribution. And then that was for means, right? If we were doing confidence intervals with proportions, we always just use the normal distribution. And if we were doing confidence intervals with variance or standard deviation, we use the chi-square distribution. And we've done all this stuff in the past. The reason that I told you don't forget that is because when we get to hypothesis testing, it's very, very similar. So here in hypothesis testing, when the sample